No, I feel bad for the poor intern at YouTube that has to post every day and then get roasted by the comment section. But that's basically what Twitter is, so if you can't beat them, join them. So YouTube said, take a break, you deserve that. Yeah, and here's that, Arlo. If you don't know who Arlo is, he's a very popular Nintendo gaming YouTuber. You punish me every time I do. This guy, last time I took a break, YouTube stopped promoting my channel. Charles says, I like how all the independent creators are saying that YouTube breaks are detrimental while all the companies advertising on YouTube are backing up the platform. I don't get what the second part has to deal with that. Really shows who this break is for, okay? Another Chris, yeah, I did that on my channel I about died, and I had to take a break with my actual job. I needed it. And another creator, I can't lol. If I take a break, I'll lose half my viewer base. No thank you, I'd rather overwork myself. So what happens is that when you take a break from YouTube, the algorithm doesn't like it, because that's what the algorithm does. The algorithm wants a constant flow of content. Now there are ways to get around it, but you have to be very consistent. And as always, the quality of the video has to be high because you know, so your fans will watch it and then they'll like it and then they'll comment on it and then more and more people will see it. So it gets out there compared to every other content creator that wants the same thing. So it's it's a competition, essentially. It's a game. And the game of YouTube is all about making inconsistent things consistent, and that's a very, very hard thing to do. In the case with Arlo, he's a Nintendo news creator. 90% of his stuff is about Nintendo news. The rest of it is like game reviews. So what happens with him is that most of his content does not age well because news has a finite time period. Usually within 24 to 72 hours, that interest in that particular topic is gone because there's something else to replace it. And that's the issue that Arlo and other news creators have to deal with is their content is not evergreen. It grows stale very quickly, so they have to constantly keep pumping out more and more content to keep their audience watching. Because it's going to be very rare when they have a video. The video gets picked up by the algorithm, it just gets world to world to world around. And then it just keeps growing for like a week or two. That rarely happens with news. So it's a pick your poison type of thing. If you want to do news, you have to constantly be uploading content. Now, I try to avoid news like the plague, obviously, because I'd rather make evergreen content. Because evergreen content is typically going to perform better over time. It's just something that it doesn't have like a finite time period. Like, I've done a lot of episode reviews, and what I've always noticed is that you have to post the day after. Because if you don't post the day after, that's when the attention on it is highest. So if you don't post on that day, you're missing out on a whole lot of views. And that's why I'm just kind of like weaning those episode reviews out because the thing is, they're not something that people want to see after like a week. So what happens is that you need that engagement. The engagement is going to be the highest when the iron is hot and you have to strike when it's hot. Like I remember back in 2021, I was constantly pushing out stuff on Final Space because that was when the third season was airing and people were very interested and for whatever reason other YouTubers weren't talking about it so I was exploiting that content gap. And the thing is, it goes away pretty quickly because I figured out once season three ended, nobody cared about Final Space anymore or at least they weren't looking for commentary on it. So YouTube is just such a game and the real winner at the end of the day is YouTube because from Google's perspective, it wants to keep people on the platform for as long as possible. So they're not going to recommend everybody. They're going to recommend the people who they think will give them the greatest chance to keep people on the website for the longest amount of time. That's just how it is. I mean, creators can complain about it all they want, but that's just the nature of the beast. And there are some content creators that insulate themselves entirely from the YouTube algorithm. Like, why do you think they have Patreon? Why do you think they stream on Twitch? Like, Frederick Knudsen, he hasn't uploaded a video in 22 months. He's been entirely relying on Patreon and Twitch. He has a video coming out that's six hours long, but he hasn't uploaded in 22 months. So, like, he's basically entirely eschewed the YouTube algorithm, and it's worked for him. But for those mid-tier YouTubers, they have to constantly be aware of their situation, and they can't afford to take a break. They can't. They just can't. Because if you lose half your audience and you have to build back to retain them and it will take like a month or two, they may not be able to survive. It's just the way it is. 
And that is the downside of YouTube, the what have you done for me lately kind of thing. And that's why I really just want to dip into that evergreen content because it always keeps growing. Because at the end of the day, the better your content is and the more flexible type of video it is, aka the generic ones that more and more people want to see, you know, the blue ocean evergreen, the better off your channel will be at the end of the day. And that's not to point fingers at the news YouTubers. Like gaming news is dying, but if you find success in it and it's working for you, keep at it. But yeah, a lot of commentators cannot afford to take a break because it would mean their channel would plummet.